Hey everyone, welcome to our third series for our Solograph webinar. Um, we're excited today to um, give you some idea about some of the cool stuff we're working on on the permit automation to help you guys really streamline that process um, in Solograph from A to Z and be able to generate your own full permit plan sets. So um, I'll give it a few minutes just to give some time for our call out for the rest of the people to join. Um, so hang on, please, for a few minutes. All right, more people are joining, so we're close to start. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I want to give um, Mikhail Goffman, which is our product line manager, who has been working excessively on the permit permitting permit automation features. Uh, he has a lot to show today um, to help us basically and help us allow us to streamline that full process in Solograph on the platform. Um, and myself, I've probably been on most of the webinars. For those of you that haven't seen me before, so I run business development and um, for Solograph and in-phase design and permitting services. I've been working with the Solograph product for almost close to six years now. Um, mikhail has been working on it for a few years as well, um, and he's done um, impressive work that we would that we are excited to show you today so that so today we're going to basically focus on the permitting and how to generate an sld and a self um generated full permit plan set um before we get started i want you guys i want you guys to be able to enjoy um those features so we want to get an understanding to see how many people are actually subscribed to the solograph platform today so michael is going to launch a poll if you guys can quickly answer um uh, the poll and give us your your answers so, Mikhail, whenever you're ready, can you launch that poll, please? Yep, it's up. Okay. All right. Excellent. So the majority of the people attendees today are using Solograph. So that's great. So the SLD is already enabled in Solograph. You guys should have access to it. It's enabled to all the account owners. And the self-generation -gener permit plan set, that is currently in beta. So again, if you would like to test the uh, the beta for um, the self-generated permit plan sets and give us your feedback, it will be highly appreciated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, run about run on a few slides, just to touch points and give you a reminder about our permitting services in general and how the automation works in Solograph. Um, so let me go back to my PowerPoint. All right. Um, again, a slide that probably a lot of you have already seen. Just a reminder of what the platform consists of, the different components. So of course, the essential elements or functionality is to create a solar design using a design tool, a proposal, a customized proposal tool, um, using all the um, NREL certification for shading, production numbers, um, DocuSign features, FinTech integrations, the full, uh, the full suite of all the features that we offer on the platform. Um, the second part or the second component of the platform is we also provide those as services so we can help design proposals for your team residential and commercial. If you don't want sales reps doing their own proposals, we have standard and expedited delivery. We provide 24 seven support. Um, and we also do the full permit plan set 
um, designs that you would submit to NHJ. So we have a growing database knowledge um, that we continue to grow over the years. We cover all 50 states. We have competitive turnaround times anywhere between 24 to 48 hours. We do commercial um, all the way up to one megawatt. And we also help automate the full process to get you the, um, the full permit plant sets. Um, a little bit about the single line diagrams about what Mikhail's going to show you today. So we are NEC compliant. So we give you all the checks and balances to make sure that you create valid circuits um, when you're stringing your, um, your panels. We support um, all in-phase storage variants. And we also help you generate and download an NSG compatible file that you can submit to the HA, or you can basically complete your in-house permit plan Permit plan, uh, permit plan process using our single line diagram. Um, just a little bit of information about how fully automated our HJ is. Um, so we extend roof and electrical design to permit plan sets uh, with a few additional clicks. So once you run through that design, you place your panels, um, another few more clicks and you're able to generate that SLD in the full permit plan set. That's the goal of SolarGraph release to streamline that full process from A to Z. Um, and then standardizing templates. So we have our own templates, attachments. We gather inputs if you're requesting those plan sets from us, or you simply can design your own plan sets based off the design, the PV design or the battery design that you've already done in SolarGraph. And then integration of data. So um, property lines around roof around your roof design, wind speed and snow, maximum and minimum ambient temperatures. Um, all that information is fully integrated. And then our in-house database growing up to date. So uh, we are 14,000 plus records complying with different governing codes. Um, and we have actually through that full process of doing a full analysis on HJ requirements, we are now integrating that into the platform. So SolarGraph can fully automate and support um, those, type of, those type of requirements for you guys to be able to create your own plan sets. Um, a little bit about what our design team and our design experiences so currently we do um, different different proposals and permit design services for our clients. We've done over 10 million proposals. We've done over a million permit plan sets. We have competitive turnaround times. We have 300 plus experienced engineers who work day-to-day -day basis to create permit designs for our partners. Um, and we have dedicated operation and customer success teams to basically make sure that we gather the right inputs and tackle any issues from the first submissions that you guys made. So this is, again, for people who are interested to not really worry too much about designing their own plan sets, um, but want to use it, want to order it, um, through Enphase as a service. Um, but today, we're going to really show you how to create your own permit plan sets and show you that full automation journey. Um, one of my favorite slides that I like to show um, in all the webinars is also as a reminder the goal or the customer journey of SolarGraph, right? What are we trying to accomplish for our installers and our customers? You link your CRM into SolarGraph, you API an address, you create a roof design, followed by a solar design. You use all our automation from the wizards to detect the, all the roof lines automatically, calculate pitch obstructions, azimuth, place your panels using smart designers, um, add a battery design, generate a proposal, get that signed, and then generate your single line diagram leading to a full permit plan set generation, which we'll see today um, with my colleague, Mika. Excellent. All right, um, just before we get into the fun stuff, I would, like to, I would like to launch two more polls just to give us an idea where you guys are with your permitting process today, how that works, and on average, how much does it cost you to create a permit plan set? So I'm gonna go ahead and launch another poll. And then we'll do one more and we'll jump to the fun stuff with Mikhail. So I'll give you guys a few minutes. Mikhail, if you want to take over the screen, go ahead and prep. Sure. All right. Okay, I see the majority of attendees today are outsourcing the service through a vendor. All right. uh, can you guys, Sean, can you see my screen? Yep, it's perfect. 
All right, great. I'll just give it another few seconds on this one, Mikhail, and then we'll launch one more poll just to get an idea of how much our partners are paying today for a permit plan set. All right, so 50% are outsourcing the service. All right, one last one before we get started. So how much does a permit plan set with one PE stamp cost you on average? All right. And just a reminder, guys, if you need, if you have questions, please post them in the chat. It's the right box. Uh, it's the box on the right, uh, right corner at the bottom. And after Mikhail is done, we will run a live Q&A session. So I'll pick up some of the questions in the chat and we'll be able to answer those live. All right. Great. Gives us a great idea on pricing. So Mikhail, it's all yours. All right, Go guys. Ahead. Thanks, Hashem. All right, guys, I'm going to create a project from scratch here. And the first thing we're going to do is create a single line diagram. And then after that, we're just going to take that single line diagram. We're just going to auto generate a full permit plan set. So I'm just going to hit new project. Uh, I'm going to use simple roof here just to get the point across. So we can also show you our new auto detect feature as well. As well. So I'll do work. We'll hit next, <clears throat> continue. So this is our new project that we've started. We have a really good imagery of the roof here. So there's no trees or anything blocking our uh, system here. We can always change the capture image if we'd like to. So if you have seasonality and you have trees blocking and you don't wanna have the leaves, you could always change that image here. Um, so you could use like a winter month or a fall month where there's less trees. Uh, we don't have that issue here. So we're gonna run with this and we're gonna go ahead and just click create design. <clears throat> Once that's loaded, the first thing we're gonna do is use our auto detect feature. So what we're gonna do is just detect a roof outline. So now we have our entire roof detected for us. And then from there, we'll use our wizard. And what this does is actually detect all the trees obstructions and create our 3D model of our roof. So you'll see that we have our 3D model of our roof ready to go. Um, you didn't really have to do anything here. This one came out perfect. But if you want to do any touch-ups, you always can. You have that pen tool. Um, in this instance, we don't have to, obviously. So from there, we're going to go to step two, which is our solar design. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that our fire setbacks are correct. We have a HJ database that has all of these fire setbacks in, in the HJ database. Um, so we take your latitude and location of your house, latitude and longitude, and based on that location, we take the most local jurisdiction. So if the city jurisdiction has their own fire setback and AHA codes, we will use those codes. If there's nothing there, then we'll go to the next level up. So we'll go to the county level. If the county level doesn't have anything, then we'll go to the state level. Um, you can always change that if you'd like. And you could also add um, uh, your own custom fire setbacks as well. So for this one, we're just gonna run with the one from our database. We'll hit apply and we'll have our one fire, uh, fire setback on our ridge. Um, and of course, you can always click any of these roof facets and these lines and you can add additional fire setbacks if you'd like. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just hit add panel. We're gonna do an end phase microinverter system with our eight IQA pluses. And what I'm gonna do here is just auto fill this roof. And I know typically not to use the south side, but I just wanna have a bigger, uh, the north side rather. I'm just gonna fill this up as well, just to illustrate our point. Um, once you have that auto filled, you might want to clean this up a little bit. We want to get rid of this lonely module over here. Um, and then once we're content with this, the next thing we're going to do is actually string up our array. So we'll use our stringing tool, click our first panel on the end and work our way across the system. You'll see how there's electrical validations going on on the left hand side. And if you go a little bit too far, the whole system is going to turn red, meaning you, some validation went wrong. So you, we won't, the system won't allow you to make a mistake electrically. So we'll have one branch circuit here and you wanna make sure that it's always white and not red. So we'll just string up the bottom one first, go across, have that first branch circuit. 
And then we'll do our system on the bottom here as well. Go across. And then we have two uh, brain circuits. So we are equipment agnostic, so we support string systems as well. I'm just doing a demo with um, a microinverter system with end phase. And the next thing we want to do is add our raptor details. We have two roof facets. We'll leave this as asphalt shingle. We'll just say two by four raptor size. Typically, you get this from your <clears throat> from your site survey. Um, there's some jurisdictions where the PEs are willing to make assumptions if it's in your house, but you get this from your jurisdiction, then you'll have your raptor size of two by four. It will say 24 inches on center. We'll leave your raptor type as rafters. You could also indicate that if, if you have trusses. We'll copy the raptor details, because we'll assume they're the same on both roof facets and hit apply. So next thing you want to do, oops, sorry guys. Sorry guys, it's such a file system. So then we have this, our roof facets are filled up and we're going to next go to step three, go to our battery design. And we're going to, right now we support uh, power wall twos and we support partial home and full home backups for our end phase microinverter systems. For this particular project, we're just going to create a full home backup for our end phase microinverter system. So we'll wait for that to load. We'll save up our design. We'll select our manufacturer as end phase. We'll do the IQ battery 5P, and then we'll just show our battery recommendations. We're gonna really focus this demo on the SLD and the permit plan set. You can obviously cater this to your system size and your consumption and your loads uh, in your home. But for this one, since it's a small home, we'll just do two batteries here, and then we'll go to our electrical design. So once our electrical design, we're up in our electrical design, you'll notice this panel on the left-hand side. Um, it has, we built it in such a way where you could kind of just work your way down this list of com extra electrical components to complete your circuit. So since we have a microinverter system, you'll see that AC system configuration is open. You have your sub panel configuration open as well and your main panel. Sub panel is optional. If we wanted to do a partial home backup, we would add that, but we'll go with a full home backup for this house. Um, if you had a DC system, meaning a string inverter, this panel would be open for you, and then this inverter system would be open for you as well, automatically. So we'll work our way down. We'll put our junction box here. You'll notice how all of the electrical components automatically connect uh, to each, each component. So the two branch circuits connect to the junction box. Then we'll add our uh, combiner panel. From the combiner panel, we'll add our AC disconnect. And then from our AC disconnect, we'll add our main service panel, the most important component. So here you can add your meter number. So if you have a site survey and you have your meter number from your utility, you can add that and it'll show up in the SLD. Um, where we have our utility here, we do have a utility database as well. Um, you, had the, you have the option to override our database if you'd like. We're probably gonna get rid of this field, however, because we're gonna just run with our uh, database because we do have a team that constantly updates this. Um, same thing with the NEC code. We have our NEC code automatically pulled from the AHA database, but if you'd like, you we give the option uh, to override it. We will probably get rid of this in the future as well once we get past our beta. Um, service voltage, we'll leave that as 240 volts for single phase residential homes. Um, we are building this in mind for the future to support commercial systems. So if you hit this drop down, you'll see 480 and 208. Um, but for right now, keep it as 240 volts, and then you have your interconnections, so your tie-ins, so that we defaulted to load side breaker tie-in, that is the most common interconnection. We also have line side connections, line side connections solar ready, uh, we have line side taps, uh, light, a load side breaker tie-in with the main breaker, part of the meter can, and not part of the main service panel. We have two split bus options, whether you want to tie in to the sub panel or into the main panel. Um, in our instance, we'll leave it as a little side breaker tie-in, but obviously you have a ton of options that you can play around with. We have our feed here. Um, so basically, if you have your breaker on the top of the main service panel, you could say top fed. If you are if you have a center fed panel, meaning your main breaker is in the middle, you could say center fed. Or if your main breaker is on the bottom, you'll, you'll see bottom fed. Um, existing main breaker size. So that also comes from your site survey when you look at the main service panel. We default it to 200, which is pretty common in the US. Um, new main breaker, 
So if you're not using P PCS or anything like that, we will automatically derate the main breaker for you. But we'll derate it to the next nominal size. So if your system's too large, for example, we would derate it to a 175 amp breaker. But if you're in your warehouse, and you don't have 175 amp breaker, and you want to derate it to 150, you can select that and we'll, we'll use that instead. You would override our next nominal size. Bus bar rating, default it to 200. Of course, you can make it 225 or whatever it is actually in, in during your site survey. And we have this tab here for internal meter, meaning that if your uh, utility meter can is separate from, it defaults to your utility meter can being separate from your main service panel. But if it's part of the main service panel, you can hit internal meter as it is in one enclosure. If you're doing MPU, you can hit new panel. Uh, we do have batteries in this instance, so I'll hit connect battery. And then we have an additional uh, battery disconnector, meaning if your um, battery is really far away from your system controller and your HE requires, you can add another battery disconnect next to the battery. Uh, we'll go ahead and su select the system controller three. We obviously support the one, two, three, and three G. Um, and that's it. So we created our single line diagram. Our circuit is ready to build. We'll create a preview. I'll hit generate line diagram. This takes about a minute. And what happens is you're going to get a preview of the single line diagram. This is launched, as Hashem mentioned earlier, already live for all solar graph users. And you can download the SLD uh, on its own. And that'll include in that zip file and include the single line and three line diagrams for you and an additional calculations page. Um, today, we're going to actually take it a step further. We're not going to download the SLD. We're just going to go ahead and download uh, the, the full entire permit plan set, which is going to include the SLD. So you'll see on the right hand side, you'll get a little preview window of the single line diagram. You can pan around here, zoom in, whatever you want to do. I did a full home backup, meaning that the system controller is in front of the main service panel because it's backing up all of the loads. Um, and then you see our battery here, our two batteries here that we called out, our rapid shutdown, um, disconnect, gateway, everything is here. Um, our, we even have our extreme module case, module output calculations, meaning that based on your location, we'll take the minimum and maximum temperature um, of that location and do all of our conduit our, all of our sizings and we'll also do our short circuit current calculations and open circuit voltage calculations as well so you know what is the absolute worst case scenario that can happen and we obviously use these temperatures based on your location for all of our d rates as well when we size our conductors so you could pan around here and make sure this is correct you could even go full screen mode here um, and pan around here and once you're content, you can um, actually hit download and you'll get a zip file. And um, as I mentioned before, you'll get a DWG in there. In that DWG, you can make any last minute changes um, and do it, use it for any submissions. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit back, hit save. I'll show you guys something a little cooler. Um, <clears throat> we'll go back to our homepage. And this feature, we will be going into beta by the end of this month. So if you're interested, uh, we'll take a poll here as well to, for you to join. We'll go ahead and hit generate permit plan set. So here you have your last minute details. You can add, you could see your wind speed and snow load. Um, you can see your utility name. You could add your client's name, if you use Bob Smith, your AHJ information. Um, installer details are all here. Um, you can add your license numbers if you'd like. So if you have your installer license number, you can put that in here. Um, electrical license number, you could add all that stuff here. Um, attachment details. So basically, we auto draw the rafters and attachments for you as well. So if you want to stagger, if you don't have high snow and wind load in your area, um, you can stagger your attachments, meaning you don't need to have the top and bottom rails hit with attachments every single time to save you on some cost. Additionally, you could also skip rafters. So if your PE or if you don't, if you know your areas um, doesn't require you to hit every single raft, rafter, you can skip that as well. And then last but not least, we will add our uh, racking system here. So we'll just use XR10s and we will use um, 
we'll use our, uh, sorry, is that it here? We'll use our L foot here, or our flash foot too, and we'll hit, and then we're all good here. You also have this additional upload other PDFs. So if there's anything that additionally your jurisdiction, the jurisdiction specifically needs in the permit plan set, you can upload a PDF here and we will append it to the final permit package. So once you're done, you're gonna hit generate permit plan set. You're gonna get a zip file. This takes about one or two minutes. In that zip file, um, you're gonna get a DWG file. And we'll go ahead and open that up for us. Oops. So in that, so we have an AutoCAD file that we'll get from our uh, zip file. And then it'll automatically generate a full permit plan set. Um, just real briefly, we have the single line diagram that we saw a preview here earlier on page one, uh, on PV4 rather. So that's still all here for you, but I'm just gonna go page by page just to show you what is generated. So you have your first page here. You have Bob Smith, the address. We have the house photo. We have the vicinity map here. Um, we have our house drawn here with our array that we built out. We also, also, we also draw out the entire property lines for you. And we also put in the dimensions for those uh, property lines. So, the other thing is we have our legend. This legend is dynamic, meaning whatever you um, whatever you add to your in your BOS system, that's what you, you'll see on your legend. If there's something additional, the legend will grow. If you have something less, the legend will, will shrink. Um, you have your AHA codes already called out here for you automatically. Your system summary, general notes, everything is here. Your BOS is here as well. So this is the first page of your cover sheet. Then you'll have PV2. So we auto draw the rafters for you, the attachments, and our BOS. It's a more zoomed in image, so a little bit more detailed than PV1 because we can get rid of the property lines here and kind of really focus on the house. You see these little green uh, orange triangles, rather. Um, it says one and two. And that really refers to these roof facets. So in the roof description table, you can see all the components of the roof. So you can see the pitch, the azimuth, the roof material, rafter size, spacing, et cetera. And you also have our design criteria. So you have your exposure category, wind speed and snow load. Um, and you also have a bill of materials here as well. So we have all, the, all of your electrical and structural components are here. We also do some structural calculations here as well. So basically, if you need a structural PE stamp, your structural PE can go here and see what is the pounds per square footage. Um, he or she can quickly look at it and know, okay, this system is safe or wait, I need to upgrade the rafters or whatever they wanna call out. Um, they, we also do the roof area coverage area. So I know in some AHJs, if your roof is over 33% covered, you might have to add uh, additional fire setbacks. So it just proves that it is or isn't and why you added the fire setbacks or why you didn't. Um, so that's some more structural calculations. So everything is done for you here. <clears throat> Next page is just the assembly page. Um, so we have our assembly that we selected with our XR10s. Um, just a static page here tells us how we're going to assemble our system. PV4 is our single line diagram. Um, so we have our AC wire details here. So it shows you the size of all the wires. We also size the conduit for you. Um, everything is here. You have, you, I know some of these as systems grow over time with storage and solar and more and more items, it gets a little bit complex to manually create these SLDs. So we could do the heavy lifting for you guys. You can just run it on your own, generate this, and then you're, you're pretty much ready to roll. Um, we also kept it inside of an AutoCAD file. You also get a PDF when this is live but we wanted to make sure you guys have the option to use a DWG file because everything is dynamic in here. So every single block is dynamic. So you can click this. And if you want to change anything last minute, you have all the options for all of the blocks. If you're like, oh shoot, I don't really want to disconnect anymore. You can delete it. Um, you're in CAD, you can do whatever you want. It's uh, your playground. Um, you have a system summary here. I went over the extreme module case outputs. Uh, so use your SLD. Then, 
And this is, again, this is a full home backup. If we had a sub panel and the, sub, the main service panel and the system controller would flip and then you would have a partial home backup system. So then 4.1 is a three line diagram. So very similar, all the calculations are exactly the same as a single line diagram. The only difference is you see your two live conductors and you have your neutral and ground shown as well automatically for you. Um, again, this feature is live for the SLD portion. And then for the last part of the electrical, we have our detailed electrical calculations page. So if your utility requires, or if you need an electrical PE stamp, we actually show you how we do all of our calculations. So the PE can quickly jump in and be like, okay, I see what D rates you guys use. I see how you size your overcurrent protection devices. I see how you size your conductors. I see your voltage drops. I'm ready to go. And he or she can just stamp off on it. Um, page six is our placards page. We pull these from the NEC. We actually also fill them in for you. So you have all of your NEC here, uh, your NEC required placards. Um, page seven. Oops, sorry guys. So page seven starts your spec sheets. So based on the system you've built, we've also added all of the spec sheets here. Um, so you have your modules, you'll have your microinverters, you'll have your batteries, battery page three, um, and then you have your combiner. So every single spec sheet's in here. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, if you needed more, your system controller is in here, but you guys get the point. Um, if you needed more spec sheets, you can upload more PDFs in that UI, and then we, we will just append them to the end here. So once this is all complete and you're content with this, our goal is honestly, you generate it with one, a few clicks and you got a PDF and you submit it right away. <clears throat> but if you ever wanted to make any last minute changes, you can, you have the CAD file, you'll be able to do whatever you want. Um, so we are gonna, as I mentioned before, we're going to beta with this at the end of the quarter, at the end of the month rather. So um, if you haven't done so already, if you could launch that poll to see uh, who's interested in joining, we uh, still have some slots open and we'd love for you guys to, to test this out and give us some feedback. Uh, we've been working on this for several years. So we really wanna give our clients the option to either order plan sets as a service and our team will do this for you. Or if you have the bandwidth and you have the time and you can click a few buttons, you can just generate the full plan set on your own and submit it right strict right away to the HJ. You don't need to wait overnight. You don't need to wait in a few hours or anything like that. Just generate it and you're ready to roll and get yourself on the roof as quickly as possible. So I'll take a pause here and I'll hand it back to Hashem. Excellent. Thanks, Mikhail, for the uh, great presentation. So I think we have uh, we have some more time for Q and A's. Um, I see there's a lot of the questions that came through the chat, uh, which is great. So uh, I'll start by reading off some questions, and maybe Mikhail, you can help me with the uh, questions. If you guys are interested, if you guys are currently using Solograph today and subscribe to the plan, and you're interested to be part of the beta, please put your name in the chat. I do not have a poll for that, unfortunately. Just flag your name in the chat, and we'll take note of it. Um, and we'll make sure that you're added to the beta when it opens. Uh, Hesha, I'm cool. going to go ahead and throw in a poll, if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. we'll do it that way then. All right. Yeah, I just threw in a poll, so, guys. So go to a poll and just say yes or no if you're interested, yeah. and then we'll have you on the list. All right. So PP answer. I'm going to take a look at the questions. Okay, there is a question from Jerry. Uh, when using Iron Ridge XR100 attachments, the software does not design based on Iron Ridge specs. The software always lists more than more than required. Mikhail, any idea on that? Sorry, uh, where I'm trying to see the question. Okay, when using Iron Ridge XR10 attachments, the software does not design based on Iron Ridge specs. So always lists more than required. Always list uh, more rails than required, or more. Is that the? Is that the, sorry, Jerry? Is that the question? Um, maybe Jerry, you can clarify. Just post in the chat again. Um, I'll just go on to another question. And I'll come back to this one. Um, 
there's a limit. There's a question from Darshan. There's a limit for voltage drop calculation. It's around max 50 feet. Can we do more? Can yeah. we do for more? Yes, so that's a great question. Um, we are going to, we're launching a feature where you can actually, um, maybe I can give you, if I can pull it up in a quick second here. Um, we're launching a feature where you can actually edit your lines, like your distances to whatever you want and the voltage drop will be um, updated accordingly. So that's a good question. That should be coming in a week or so. Okay. Uh, let me look. Um, so question for Brian, does Inphase use Solograph? Yes. So Inphase does use Solograph and Solograph belongs to Inphase. So it is its own priority prior, prior um, design tool and proposal tool. So just like another um, quick thing I wanted to add, Hashem, if it's okay. Um, yeah, um, our, we have yeah, our, internal design, our internal design team has been using the software uh, for over two years, our services team. So almost three years at this point. So it is a uh, it's battle tested, if you will. Yep. Um, another question: Do do we provide the ASC report? Not sure if I'm familiar with that one, Mikhail. ASC report. ASC report. Maybe uh, Angie, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's something like ours. If it's if it's um, we per, we don't add it, but for like the American society, as like a civil engineer society documentation, we can add that if it's like for a specific construction. Um, but if you have a sample of something, that we like, we can definitely take a look into that. Sure. All right, and just a reminder, guys, um, you need to be subscribed to Solograph subscription plan. Any type of plan is fine to be able to beta test um, um, the permit design feature. Um, there's a question, what is the price and process to use the product from Brandon? So Brandon, we have subscription plans that are based off the number of users that you would need. Um, you can see the subscription plans on our website. If you're interested to look at pricing and discuss and have specific questions, I can get you in touch with a sales rep. So everybody that's interested in the call to look at Solograph, get a personalized demo, we just flag the importance or the urgency and we will get a sales rep to contact you right away. Uh, uh, Hish or, yep. uh, Hish Hisham, do you mind quickly right. share my screen? I just wanna show, uh, yes. just answer a question from earlier. Yes, please so, do. Yeah, let me just do this. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Okay, yeah, you good? Yeah, so there's a question about, can I adjust the conductor length and things like that? So we are launching this in a little bit where you'll be able to go in and you'll see all your wire sizes and you'll be able to change your conductor metal from copper to aluminum. So if you're doing a ground mount or a really long run and you wanna save on some costs, you could change your conductor to aluminum. Um, you're, you could change your conduit height, so we default to three and a half. Uh, but you can always change that. Your roof location, if, like again, if you don't have a roof, it's like ground height, you can change that. Uh, if you have a really big system, uh, probably more common for commercial, you can run parallel conductor sets to reduce voltage drop. Um, and then the max length, so you'll you'll be able to put in here whatever you want, and it'll all update for you um, all the voltage drop and all the calculations automatically. Same thing, conduit grouping. If you want to keep all your conductors in one conduit, you can tab that and then we'll update the calculations and D rates as needed. Um, insulation, you could also change that as well. So I just want to give you a, a preview that yes, this is a big ask. It's coming very soon. Okay. Thanks, Miguel. Um, I'll, I'll keep going with the questions. We still have some, uh, some more time. Um, do you have the ability, question from Kurt, do you have the ability to generate plans and submit permit applications to the AHJs? So yes, we do generate the full plan sets, which Mikhail just showed through our in-house design team. Uh, we would give you the full plan sets ready to go, but you would need to do the submissions to the AHJ. So we don't have blenders to do submissions to the AHJ, but we would accommodate any revisions that come back from the AHJ um, if any do come back. All right. 
Uh, do you have solar edge and Q cell batteries and inverters in your beta? Mikhail? Uh, we have solar edge um, as an inverter system. Uh, we have Q cell modules. We do not have Q cell battery support for the plant set. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to obviously expand coverage over time as we get the system into beta and see what, what components and systems are the most crucial for our clients. Yeah. Um, a comment from Jerry, do drawings, no PCS powered control systems. HJs are requesting that. Yes, we're aware of that Jerry, especially in California. So that is in the roadmap and it's coming up in Q3. So we will be opening up a beta um, pretty soon. Um, if you're subscribed to Solograph and you have an active account, you'll be able to test it. And we will have a webinar on PCS. Um, Interested, a uh, question from Jermay, interested in hearing about price points, our commercial applications in the works. Um, today, with what Mikhail showed, if you were to do this on your own, um, it's only supported for residential projects. Um, Mikhail probably can give an idea if we have any plans to support commercial, but through our design services, we do commercial permit plan sets and proposals as well. I don't know, Mikhail, if you want to add. Um, no, it's, anything on the roadmap correct. for commercial? Yeah, so we it is um, we built a system right away to be able to support commercial. You guys saw the service voltages. You saw 240, then you saw 208 and 480. So it will be down the road, and um, yeah, we are working it down the road. So you will eventually have the same service for CNI, but right now it really is meant for residential. Um, question from Ray, can you give us a phone number to the department in charge of financing? So Ray, can you be a little bit more um, clear on, on the ask? Are you looking to finance residential projects or commercial projects? So the way it works is we have FinTech uh, lenders already integrated like Mosaic, Dividend, Good Leave, Service Finance. So if you work with any of those entities, you'd be able to integrate your loans and submit the customer application, credit application process directly through SolarGraph. Um, we have one lender that supports commercial projects, which is BMO, Bank of Montreal. Um, that is also integrated in SolarGraph, and that is um, a lender that you can apply for in a platform um, to use their loans for commercial purposes. Uh, Forrest, will Eagle View be making a return? Um, we are not going to be continuing Eagle View. We've already, um, we've already um, let them go. But we are looking for other options uh, in terms of imagery providers that are similar to Neomap and provide high definition imagery and have good coverage um, in those regional areas where you guys were getting the Eagle View imagery. So for now, the best workaround would be to use your own images, whether they're drone images or um, blueprints for new constructions or new homes. Um, is there a way, a uh, question from Adnan, is there a way in the UI where the main service could be defined as single phase or three phase service and the system could recommend the versions based off the chosen service? Mikhail? Yeah, so, so we can we can definitely add it to be a little bit more explicit, like single phase, three phase. Right now we just keep it as it's US. So just, just to be clear, this is uh, for US based clients only right now. Um, so 240 is the standard single phase, um, and then you have 208 and 480 three phase. So if you select those voltages, it'll apply uh, three phase for those two, and then 240 would be single phase. But we could definitely make it a little bit more explicit to just say 240 single phase. It's not an issue. Okay. Um, I see a few questions, Ray and Brian, on pricing on plant sets. So the way it works, guys, it's either you, if you're going to use the proposal in the design tool similar to what Mikhail did to create and generate a proposal using the design tool, um, and you have a bunch of users that you want to add, then you would go for a paid subscription that's a per user cost. So our standards are two, four, and six users, and then we go all the way up to enterprise, right? If you're only looking to use us for services, we do have plans for services only. So they're more as pay-as-you-go services, um, where you can put a credit card on file, and you can just order your plan sets directly from SolarGraph. But if you were to use the automation that Mikhail showed and run through the full flow of creating a design, you would need to be on a subscription plan. 
Um, for Ray and Brian, I'll have uh, sales reps in your region contact you this week to schedule uh, an appointment and walk you through pricing and the different um, plans that we offer. Um, all right. Um, let me look at other questions. A um, few questions here from uh, Taco. How does the upcoming self-generated plan set chart set change to the change the TAT and acceptance rate customers can expect from the current plan set services available today? Are there any limitations to the states, territories, PR Canada, the tool support? Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing uh, Mikhail, the question is more around if if our partners are using our automation, our tools to generate their own plan sets, is that gonna impact any decisions with the AHJs? turnaround time turnaround time i guess would be faster but because you generate those right away um but i presume we're using the same hj database so that wouldn't really change or impact um fdrs and so forth yeah that's exactly correct so it's all the same data our team uses the same exact tool every single day so right. nothing would change the only thing that would change is your turnaround time would be however long you guys saw me make one so just instead of waiting overnight, you could just have it right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, Darlene, sales rep will contact you to discuss um, subscription options. Um, Matthew has a question. When adding green button data into SolarGraph, can you add a feature that shows daytime versus nighttime consumption so we can make sure battery sizing is accurate? Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So on the pre-consumption page, Matthew, you're able to upload your bills, uh, using green button data or manually, and then you are able to select from different consumption profiles that we already have configured in SolarGraph, or you can customize your own consumption profile, which you can, um, basically base off the hour, the hour of the day. So that would basically kind of show you the flow from daytime to nighttime. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, we'll take a few more questions. Um, um, question from Gabriel. Yep. No, no go ahead, sorry. Uh, in case with multiple get gateways does it keep the minimum clearance in conduit does it add the lin filter automatically so um Again, yeah so uh <coughs> right now like again this is mainly for this is for residential systems so we support for the sld and the plan set it's only one gateway um why once you get to commercial grade systems then you have like uh, and minus one line filters from however many gateways you have. Um, so that we would obviously, once we, once we get to CNI, we'll, we would uh, have that included. But right now, one uh, system controller, or sorry, one gateway, one system controller, or multiple gateways. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's always one, uh, sorry, I, I, I thought I said system controller. So gateways, it's uh, per, uh, um, IQ combiner, each combiner will, you'll see the gateway and everything. And line, right. line filters are only really, uh, really useful for CNI purposes, which we will build up to down the road. Okay. Uh, Dennis had a question. How do we contact the two of you directly for design questions? So Dennis, your first line of contact would be our support, our support line. Um, if our support individuals cannot help, they would escalate it to uh, myself or Mikhail, or depending on who the query is supposed to go to internally. So my advice would be is to escalate it through the support line first. I think it's going to be created and assigned to an individual that's going to get back to you uh, with an answer. Uh, Darlene had a question, turnaround time on getting the plans done. So it's two business days, 24 to 48 hours on the plan sets. And then if there's a, if, if staffing is involved, it's another one or two business days. Um, can this be used for solar thermal applications, Mikhail? No, I can't right now. 
Okay. All right, I'm gonna run through. Uh, for everyone questions. that's still here, um, sorry, uh, I see like 68%. If you guys haven't um, filled out the polls, if you could just take a quick minute, just to click the little yep. polls tab and just hit those for us, we'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, for Brian, yes. Um, even for our pay as you go service, you have the option when you're completing the input form, permitting input form, you can select uh, include a stamp or not. And then you would be charged separately for the stamp. Um, question from Adnan Tigo batteries to be added to the database. Um, for now, we are putting those as separate feature requests. However, in Q3 and the Q3, we're probably going to have capability where you're going to be able to add your own batteries in without having uh, to put them in through a feature request. And they'll, you know, you're going to have to wait for a month or so until it's released. Okay. Question from Eric, uh, will it do solar arrays? So it's, it's exactly, it's the same plan set that you would get from any vendor or if we would do it. So it's exactly, you would have all the arrays and the circuits that tie up the, uh, the panels in those arrays. Um, okay. I think the multiple gateways one I accidentally answered earlier, but yeah, only one. Uh, right. uh, we recorded, I think, yes, we'll have a recording this um question from brian with ground or parking structures or floating solar application solar applications in the works yes ground uh ground mounts uh for sld i think we already we already released as um carports ground mounts, like carports and ground mounts for the proposal uh, side where we are working on getting the same for sld's and plan sets as well mm -hmm. Um, Adnan, to your question, yes, we do. So we do structural and electrical stamps, PE stamps, and pricing is based off volumes too. Uh, we do have standard pricing. Again, uh, we can have the sales reps talk to you about the, uh, the pricing structure for the stamps. You're welcome, Jennifer. We appreciate your attendance. Thanks, Jennifer. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Do does our permitting feature support Generac batteries, power cells? I know we support uh, that on the battery design tool. Yeah, not for the SLD currently or the plan. Not for the but SLD. If, but if you need so, it done anyway, we always have a services team that can help you guys out. Right, the services customer. we do it. So, Mikhail, just so everybody on the call here is clear, um, we support in phase batteries for now. We support end phase SLD. batteries. Yeah. So we support end phase batteries right now for SLDs and plant sets. We also support Powerwall 2 uh, for batteries for SLDs and plant sets. Yeah. All right. Do you need AutoCAD for editing? Um, so it's a DWG file that you get. So uh, so Conrad, this is your question. Sorry if I skipped over anyone, but you do, you need AutoCAD or a CAD, some sort of CAD software. It doesn't have to be AutoCAD itself, but you need some sort of CAD software that can open up DWGs uh, in order for you to make edits. Otherwise, you're, you're going to get a PDF um, output. OK. Um, there were a few questions on Tesla Power, Powerwall 3. Um, currently, we don't support that yet, but it's in the works. So we will notify everyone once we are able to support that, but we do not support that at the moment. It's still, it's still a fairly, kind of fairly new battery. So um, we're trying to get our permitting feature out and working in very good, in very good shape before we start adding more, um, more, more, more um, manufacturers to the list. Uh, Brian, yes. So yearly subscriptions do have a discount. You get up to a 30% discount on a yearly plan compared to a monthly. 
Oh, I missed the question from Thomas. Uh, does the one line feature support yeah. 400 AM service? Yeah, we do support 400 AM service. So basically, you once you're, you, when you put in your main service panel, when I did it in the demo, you could just change that to 400 AMPs and it'll update everything accordingly. Or if you have a split bus panel, that's just technically can be considered 400 amps. We have like 200 amps for one main breaker and 200 for the other. You can do that, you just have to select a split bus panel. All right. Uh, we can take probably take a few more. Got a, another three minutes. We can take a few more. Again, uh, we'll be sending a recording out. So you'll get an email by tomorrow from our marketing team. That would include um, the recording, it would include a registration link if you are not already subscribed to Sales Rep. Um, for those of you that flagged that you want to speak to Sales Rep right away, we'll make sure somebody will contact you by tomorrow um, to discuss pricing and subscription plans and the different types of, types of plans that we offer. And uh, don't forget to always check the solograph.com website under our resource section. You will find the link to all the upcoming webinars that you can register for. So. We will be having a cadence of monthly webinars with different topics. A lot of them would be more related to new features that we're releasing. Uh, Brian, how friendly is the program for edits? Um, when you say program, is it when you're doing creating a design or when you're working on the permitting part? Can you please clarify that? Oh, after uh... after after the drawing. So I'm, I'm presuming he's referring to the permits, the actual concepts, and that kind of abides by the other question from Kenny: is revisions. If I generate a, my own full permit plan set in Solograph, am I able to go back and revise that, Mikael, yeah. easily? Yeah, you can. It. So you could. You have two options, right? You can either go and um, back up to the Solograph <clears> UI. <throat> make your changes and regenerate the plan set. Um, the other option is you have the CAD file. You can go open it up and that's pretty much a sandbox. You can kind of do whatever you want there. So I would say it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do that. All right, we can take another two questions. Thanks, David. <laughs> All right. Ryan, I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're sold already. All right. Welcome on board, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, will the self-generated plan sets will fulfill yeah. values in Canada? Um, so the self-service, it will eventually uh, fulfill projects in Canada. We're launching it stateside first, in a meeting in the US. And yeah, we have two routes to go to, right? We'll expand to Canada eventually, and then we'll also go to larger scale projects like CNI uh, as well. Uh, okay, any key people? Yeah, I mean, Taco, maybe we could, for comparison to other products, maybe happy to chat offline on another call. Yeah. All right, great. Well, thanks everyone again. It's always great to see a number of attendants growing for every single webinar. We try to diversify our topics. Uh, we try to have different people from the company Come and showcase the, the projects they've been working on. We feel permitting is very important. We wanted to bring that to your attention. And we're always looking to improve the customer experience and the full integration and streamlining of different ends and components in SolarGraph to keep you guys on one platform. So that's our goal um, with SolarGraph. And please stay tuned to all of our upcoming webinars um, and always um, review, um, check the website to know what's coming up and you can register in advance. Yeah, and All if right. you guys, uh, last thing, if you guys are interested, in, uh, those of you that are interested in joining the beta, uh, be on the lookout for the invitation and we'll do another one of these and a little bit more in depth and you can ask any questions to make sure you guys are comfortable uh, with the beta and give us, give us feedback from there. Excellent. All right. All right. Yeah, you, and then don't forget to, uh, don't forget to answer the poll for the beta. So we can, so um, Mikhail can prepare the invites to you guys. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everyone, and have a great um, rest of your day. Thanks, Take guys. Take care. Bye-bye.